This is the first lesson in chapter 5, but we're actually working out of section 5.3. We're going to be solving quadratic equations. We're going to show you three different ways to solve a quadratic. The first way we're going to use is using square roots. Second method will be by factoring, which we've already kind of done a little bit. And then the third way, which is probably a review for you, for most of you, is the quadratic formula. Um, and then the uh, last thing that we're going to be doing is looking at the discriminant, which is part of the quadratic formula, and determining the number of solutions that a given quadratic equation has. So um, I want to just stress that there are three different methods for solving a quadratic equation, but your goal is to figure out when you approach a problem what the most appropriate and most efficient method is. You do not want to be sitting there solving every single quadratic with a quadratic formula because you won't have enough time on your test to finish the test. So it's all about understanding um, when you can use a, a certain method and when it's most appropriate to use that method. So the very first method that we're going to do is solving square roots. And you'll probably like this method um, because it's very quick, but you can't always use this method. Okay, when you see a linear term in your quadratic, meaning something like this problem here, you can't use the square root method. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but um, basically what you're trying to do is isolate x. Okay, we see that all of these are quadratics because I have something squared. Okay, all of my variables here, the x is always squared. And um, what I'm going to do is look to try to get x squared by itself. So I'm going to subtract the 3 here, divide out that negative 9, and then I'm going to take the square root. Now make sure that when you take the square root, you don't just write 4 thirds. Oh, and by the way, if I ask you to take the square root of 16 ninths, you can split this up into root 16 over root 9, which makes it much easier to do without a calculator. You shouldn't be using a calculator for basically any of this homework until we tell you to start using a calculator. Um, but anyhow, um, if you answer this as 4 thirds, this is actually technically wrong because we have two solutions here, positive and negative 4 thirds. Okay, so always make sure that you have two unique solutions um, anytime you have a quadratic. Now I'm going to skip and make you guys do um, number 4 this is the one I want you to do by yourself. It's very similar to number one. So you can pause the video and try that one and check with the key. I'm going to do number two with you. Um, you want to isolate in number two so that you have the uh, quadratic term here isolated. And divide down by the four. So you have x plus two squared equaling negative four. Now when you take the square root of both sides, like so, you will have x plus two here on the left. But on the right hand side, you have positive or negative square root of negative 4. Now this is not a real number. Remember we can't take the square root of a negative number. So because this is not real we have no real solutions in this problem. Eventually we will be able to continue to solve this but for right now because we have a negative number inside our radical we stop and we say no real solutions. Now I kind of talked about this already but number three is not something you can use square roots with because you have a linear term meaning this is to the first power. Whenever you see this you cannot use the square root method. Some of you will incorrectly try to use the square root method here. So you're going to isolate that square root. I'm sorry the x squared here and you're going to try to square root both sides. But you cannot take the square root of this 4x plus 5 plus now you have an x on both sides of the equation. So this is why this would not be correct in, in terms of solving for x. So in this case we have to do something different we have to factor this problem here. okay? And um, you can practice factoring that one after we get to the next section. But um, I want to also go over problem number five with you. In problem number five, um, I want to isolate the x term. Now it's already isolated, so all I have to do is take the square root of both sides. When I do that, I end up with x plus five equaling root 20 is something I need to reduce. So Going back to um, radicals, I think we did a little bit of this in the beginning of the year, but we're going to simplify this um, and find the largest perfect square that fits inside, which is 4. So this becomes positive or negative 2 root 5. Okay. Now if I want to isolate the x, I'm going to subtract the 5 over. Um, I like to put that out in front, so negative 5 plus or minus 2 root 5. I don't like having that behind the radical, because a lot of you, especially if you have sloppy handwriting, you might confuse this with that. Um, or you're not really very clear about it and I don't know if you mean this or if you have that number you know usually it's not the same number but you, if I don't know if you have that number underneath the radical so just be really clear about that and just put that term in the beginning 
like I have here. So you would subtract that 5 over the other side and write it here first. Okay, so this would be our unique solution, two unique solutions for that. I want you guys to, like I said, do 4 and 6. Um, 6 is a little bit trickier than number 5, but please check with the key to make sure you can do this correctly. All right, moving on to method 2. We are going to be factoring um, and using the zero product property in order to solve. And we talked about ZPP already, beginning of the year, so this is a lot of review. Um, the only type of problem that's going to be different for you, we didn't stress a lot, is the difference of squares. So a lot of this is review. I'm going to go through this really quickly. So um, please, if you don't understand any of this, go back to the algebra review section. There are a couple different things you can look at. Um, solving quadratics is one and the factoring is the other one. So there's a couple mini tutorials there if you need any help on this. Okay, factoring with a uh, lead coefficient of 1 means you have a positive 1 on the outside of that quadratic term. Here in my example, I don't have a positive 1, so I would factor that out first to make this a much easier question for myself. And then I'm going to just carry down that negative, technically it's a negative 1, but I don't need to write the 1 out there. But I'm going to carry that down, and then I'm going to factor here by finding two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add up to 2, so that gives me x minus 4 and x plus 2. And then solving, using the zero product property, these two um, equations here would be x minus 4 equals 0 and x plus 2 equals 0. So I get two unique solutions, x equals 4 and x equals negative 2. Notice that this negative on the outside does not affect my solutions whatsoever. Okay. Now when the leak coefficient is not 1, like in this case here, um, you're going to do something slightly different. The first thing you always want to do also is make sure that you get 0 on one side. So you would move these over. And now, looking at this problem here, I can factor out a 2. Make sure you're always taking out a GCF. So if I take out that 2 here, I am now left with this on the inside. This 2 is kind of going to stay out on the outside here. Don't worry about that 2 so much. Let's work on factoring here. I'm going to find two numbers that multiply to 24. And again, or sorry, 48. Oh, shoot. I didn't factor that out. Sorry. This should be a 4 here. My bad. So two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add up to negative 5 would be um, negative 8 and positive 3. Okay, So again, to find those two numbers, I take 6 times negative 4. That's how I got the 24 here. And the negative 5, and these are the two numbers that I'm looking for. Now I'm going to split that up, keep the first term, but split the middle term into negative 8x plus 3x, drop down the negative 4, carry the 2 out in front, make sure that stays out in front. And now you're going to factor by grouping. So take these two terms, factor out the GCF here, that GCF would be 3, or sorry, geez, 2x, my bad. So 2x, and I'm left with 3x minus 4 left over. Out of these two next terms, I'm going to factor out the GCF here. Here you don't see a GCF. Make sure you pull out a positive 1. If you don't, you're going to get really confused. Make sure you're writing this, not cutting any corners. Because a lot of people mess up because they don't pull out that positive 1. So if there is no GCF, at least make sure you pull out a 1. And you have left over 3x minus 4 equals 0. Okay, now, because you have the same thing written in the parentheses, you can pull that out. So you have 3x minus 4. Now group the two terms that you pulled out, the 2x plus 1. Put those together. Keep the 2 on the outside. Set it all equal to 0. Now, 2 equal to 0 is not a solution. It doesn't produce you with any solution. So that's why the 2 doesn't really affect anything. If I set 3x minus 4 equal to 0 and 2x plus 1 equal to 0, I get solutions of 4 thirds and negative 1 half. Okay? So that's factoring with a leak coefficient that is not 1. Um, in all of these cases, I just want to reiterate the fact that method 1 does not work. Method 1 does not work here because this linear term here appears. Okay? So you can't use the square root method for either, the, uh, either of those problems. You could use the square root method for this next one. But I want you to learn how to factor this as well because you're going to get slightly more difficult questions where it's not so easy or straightforward to use the uh, square root method. So in this next one, this is called the difference of squares, difference because you are subtracting. See how we subtract between. So if I had x squared plus 16, you cannot factor this. You would not be able to do this method at all because this is not factorable. But x squared minus 16 is. Um, in order to factor this, you take the square root of this first term and the square root of the second term, x and 4. And you just put a plus sign and a minus sign in between. And that's it. You call it a day. So I get two solutions here of negative 4 and positive 4. So if I were to make it a little bit more complex for you, let's say it was 9x squared minus uh, 
16, or let's do 81. No, no, it's a bad one to use, sorry. Let's do 9x squared and 25. Then um, this would factor into 3x plus 5 and 3x minus 5 because I'm going to take the square root of that term and the square root of that term, put them together, and put a plus and a minus in between. If it was equal 0, then I go ahead and I solve. So I get 3x plus 5 equals 0. 3x minus 5 equals 0 to get two solutions, negative 5 thirds and 5 thirds. Okay, no, I'm talking fast, but just had to go through that. Now, question one over here. This is a problem where you can't use square root method and it's not a trinomial. In this case, take out a GCF. That's why the first step should always be factor out a GCF. So when we take out that GCF here of x, I'm left with 3x minus 4. I've just now transferred this into a factored expression, and now I can set and use the zero product property here. So x equals 0, and 3x minus 4 equals 0. So once you have your uh, factored expression, you can set each term equal to 0. So I get um, x equals 0 and x equals 4 thirds. Most people do not um, end up with this solution, x equals 0, because they don't factor this correctly. So you're going to miss out on a unique solution here because you didn't factor it right. If you don't do what I just did in step 1. Okay. Next example, example two, I purposely put a question on here that ends up being not factorable. If we move over this 12 here, we end up trying to find two numbers that multiply to 24 and add up to negative 9. There are no two numbers that, that do this, so in this case we have to use the quadratic formula. This is a case where this is your last resort, the quadratic formula. Because A lot of you like it, but you usually make little bit, like, tiny little mistakes that end up, um, you know, giving you crazy solutions. So this is something you need to memorize. You might already have it memorized. You just might need a refresher in it. I don't know the song. I'm not going to sing it. So if you want to learn it, learn it and then sing it to me. Anyhow, this method is your last resort. Okay, It's a tedious method to use because you make errors in your computation. It slows you down. So try to avoid it when you can. This method though, here's the caveat, it always works. So you could use it on every single problem. It's just not really to your benefit to do that. Um, also, um, you know, like I said, people make mistakes in here, but uh, I forget where I'm going. I'm rambling. Okay, moving on. Let's try number one. All right. Um, when you look at number one here, you have your terms a, b, and c. a is the coefficient in front of x squared, b is the coefficient here in front of the linear term, and c is your constant. Okay, so let's take a look and do the opposite of b. 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times a times c. Now you might be thinking, why didn't she put negative 8 squared here? Technically, 8 squared and negative 8 squared are equivalent, so that's why I usually drop the negative sign anyhow whenever I do the b squared term. But it's up to you. You can write it either way. Anyhow, I'm going to now divide by 2 times a, and I'm going to simplify. So this is what x equals x is now going to equal 8 plus or minus 64 plus. Now this is where students make a lot of mistakes in their order of operations. This gives me a positive number. If you write this as a negative, um, oh this is 33, sorry. If you write this as a negative 132, you have 64 minus 132, you're going to get a crazy number, you're going to get inside here a negative number and you should know that when you have a negative number, um, that radical since you're taking the square root of a negative number, it gives you no solution. So that's why it's really important to make sure you have um, order of operations correct here. So I have to add 32, 132 as opposed to subtracting it. So I end up with 8 plus or minus the square root of uh, 196 divided by 2. Now, in this solution, I'll have 8 plus or minus. The square root of 196 is a perfect square. So I end up with 14 here over 2. So. Sometimes students leave this answer like this. You need to make sure that you clean up this answer and give me two integers, because both of these will be integers. So I have 8 plus 14 over 2, and 8 minus 14 over 2, to give me a solution 22 over 2, and negative 6 over 2. So x is 11 and negative 3. Now, because I have integers as my answer, um, Actually, you could come back to here, and this should be factorable. There are two numbers that multiply to negative 33 and add up to negative 8, and those would have been x minus 11, x plus 3, to give you um, solutions here of x equals 11 and x equals negative 3. So, see, that's why it's really tedious to do quadratic formula when you don't have to. But I just wanted to point that out to you and do that problem with you. Um, I think I'm going to let you guys do number 2 on your own. Okay, this one should be on your own. Make sure you try this. 
Try me, please. Okay. Let's do um, problem three together. And... I don't know. So, well, you know what? I want you guys to do two, three, and four together. Um, and we'll talk about it. If you have any questions on this, we'll talk about it in class. I'm trying to keep this video a little bit shorter because I want to get to the next part. Um, you should be able to do four just fine. Three, uh, basically I'm going to talk about it probably tomorrow. Just remind me. All right. Anyway, let's go to the discriminant. Okay. The discriminant is the part in the quadratic formula. If this looks familiar, it, sh it should. Um, this is the part of the quadratic formula with the uh, radical. Okay. If your discriminant is positive, meaning if the number on the inside, this is called the discriminant here, if the number on the inside of that radical is positive, then you have two real solutions. You will get two numbers, two real solutions. And you can verify that if you look inside here. We got a positive 196, right? That's why we ended up with two unique solutions here. If I were to do the discriminant and test all of these problems, this discriminant here for this particular problem would have to also be positive. Um, so would this one because we do get real solutions and so on. So every single one of these. Now the only one that we did that would not give me a uh, positive would be problem two. So remember, problem two had no real solutions, and that was because we had a negative radical. And if you check the discriminant here, it would be the same issue. If your discriminant is negative, let me get back to it, sorry. If b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. So if it is a negative, we have no real solutions. Okay, because you can't take a radical and take the square root of a negative number. Now, if the discriminant is exactly zero, so if b squared minus 4ac equals zero, which is something that happens, I'm going to give you a hint, in problem number three, you only have one real solution. Okay, now this is important because it's going to tie into what we do graphically. When you see your discriminant have two real solutions, this is going to be a, a parabola, a quadratic, that touches the x-axis. Did I just say x? I don't know what I just said. I think I said x-axis. But touches the x-axis at two different unique spots. So that's what this would actually represent graphically. You would see a uh, parabola that crosses the x-axis twice. And it could open up, you know, two, but um, it crosses it twice. Now, when you have no real solutions, that quadratic, that parabola, never crosses the x-axis. So it could be above the x-axis, x-axis, or it could be below the x-axis like that and open downward. But it never crosses, right? It doesn't touch this line here, okay? And finally, um, when you have the discriminant equaling zero, you get one real solution because it touches the x-axis at one point. I know I didn't really hit it very well, but it only touches it once and then bounces back off. Okay, so its vertex is exactly on the x-axis. So this is a really important concept in terms of kind of um, tying that into a graphical approach for solving discriminants because these are the zeros of your function, which is what you're doing when you solve a quadratic formula question like that first one. You're finding it essentially where y is equal to zero, because this is just a function at y equals x squared minus 8x minus 33. We're setting it equal to zero, so in other words, finding where it crosses this axis, the x-axis. Um, and that's what you're doing whenever you solve a quadratic formula, or quadratic um, equation, all right? I think that's the end of the lesson. Sorry, I was talking super fast. Uh, just go through stuff. I think most of it was review, but needed to be said. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.